Hey everybody, welcome to this week's show. I'm excited to have you guys all on here. And for those of you that are listening for the first time, this is a, a podcast and I also have a blog uh, video series that goes along with it where we are talking specifically about lead generation for real estate. And so I don't know all things about lead generation. My specialty is generating leads from the internet, but there's a lot out there that I haven't learned yet. And so by bringing on other real estate agents that specialize in a, in a specific type of lead generation or have had some success with something new that they're trying, I like to bring them on to have them share with us what it is that they're doing. And some of the agents that we interview are doing 24 transactions a year and some are doing several hundred a year. And today happens to be one of the several hundred. I have John Verdo on the call with me today and he is partners with Holly McRae. They're actually married and they are the number one team in Tennessee. And uh, last year they did 406 transactions, which is super exciting. They're, um, so they're big, big producers. And John is somebody a lot like me, generates a lot of his leads on the internet. And so John, welcome to the show. Thanks, Lori, I appreciate that. All right, so you are, this is very interesting because I know you guys personally, so it helps me a little bit with knowing um, how your team is wired a little bit. So you guys have several uh, streams of leads coming in, several several, several different sources. Um, and web is one of the larger ones that you guys do. You also do radio. You have an ISA team. And, of course, you're doing sphere of influence and agent referrals. Is there anything major that I missed? Oh, pay-per-click marketing. Is there any right. other like, leads I, think I didn't mention? No, those are the top sources. Those are the those are the places we generate the vast majority of our business. So um, I think you pretty much covered it there. All right. So you told me that twenty percent of all of your buyer leads are coming from social media ads, and six yes. percent of your listing leads are coming from um, for also from social ads, which is also huge for the people that they might hear. 20% and then 6% and, and automatically favor the buyer side. But most of us would, would, would raise our hands all day long for 6% of the listing side to be generated. Right. Cause that's, we all know that's where the money is. So that's also really incredible. So when you say social ads, what are you referring to? Okay. So for us specifically, we, we focus mainly through Instagram and Facebook. Um, and so we create our own ads on both platforms routinely. We have uh, uh, our own system of ways of generating buyer and seller leads. Uh, we treat each as its own almost apartment per se, because the value proposition is completely different and the ad structures are completely different when you're focusing uh, your attention to try to generate buyer or seller leads. Uh, but like I said, we, uh, we are very consistent and we're very focused on those two platforms for, for um, lead generation. Okay, so these are this is Facebook and um, and Instagram. Are you running the Insta yep. Instagram ads from the Facebook platform? Yes. So Instagram works a little bit differently because there's ways of doing it. You know, if you're going to the the way that a lot of people do it is they they promote posts. So they post a pic a video of their listing, or they post some sort of content on Instagram and then you can promote that post directly from the post, which you have to do through Instagram. Now, once you've created that ad, you can go into your ads manager account and then edit it from there. But in order to create the ad, you've got to go through uh, Instagram, push, put the post on Instagram and then create the ad. Now, that's, that's one way of doing it. Um, the other way of doing it is actually creating a campaign like you would um, for Facebook ads through your ads manager account on Facebook. And you can set up campaigns and ad groups for things like Instagram stories, which we've started doing too. Okay, so tell me about Instagram stories because I'm not really familiar with what that is. Yeah. Okay, so Instagram stories, if you go into your Instagram account and you you're looking at it and there's, there's those little um, uh, stories at the top of your account uh, and they're like little circles and they show 
different people that you follow. And if they've posted an Instagram story, you'll see it up at the top of your account there. Um, they're a popular way of getting information out to your followers and to keep in touch with people. And what you can do now, what Instagram has done fairly recently is allowed you to create ads that run specifically with those stories at the top. And the reason being is because there's a lot more eyes on Instagram stories than there are on the traditional posts based on the, the statistics. So Instagram has now monetized that or Facebook, I guess. They're, they're one and the same in terms of, of, of the uh, uh, paid po business portion of it. And so you can run those ads on, on the stories and get a really great um, audience in, in terms of uh, eyes looking at those ads on Instagram as opposed to just Facebook for those ads. Okay, so let me understand. So I'm scrolling on Instagram and I see the Instagram stories and I mm -hmm. click on an Instagram story. First of all, what is that story containing that would be worth running an ad on for you guys? So Instagram stories ads work just like Facebook ads. You can create um, a specific audience that you can, that you can um, you can get that ad out to. Same structure. You would you're, you're going to go through the, the ads manager, create the campaign. You're going to create your audience just like you would on Facebook. The only difference in that is is instead of your placement being on say uh, mobile, Facebook mobile, or um, you know the audience network or something like that, you're going to specifically be creating an ad for store. It's going to say stories on Instagram in when you're creating the campaign. So everything for that campaign is done through ads manager. And then you're just basically creating that campaign specifically for Instagram stories. Now there's a lot more requirements that go with that, but when you're creating it, that's the way you go. So your audience can be whatever it wants. It can be location specific. It can be demographic specific. All of the tools that are available on Facebook for refining your audience are available for these ads too. So what is, so, Okay, so it's it, it's not a story plus an ad. The ad is the story. So how it works is, is someone's scrolling through, someone goes onto their Instagram account, they go up to the stories, they click on one, and they start scrolling through their Instagram stories by swiping um, left or right. And um, they also scroll through on their own. And so you're scrolling through your stories or you're looking through your daily uh, uh, updates from all of your followers or the people that you follow. And then within that action of moving through the different stories, your ad will pop up. If um, that person fits your uh, fits the audience that that you're you're targeting. OK, so, so it's exactly the same. So yeah. It's the same as a sponsored ad would be like on Facebook. Um but it's showing up in the stories section. You got it. Okay. Wow. Interesting. And what kind of ads? Okay. This is, I'm fascinated by who responds to Instagram ads and, and what the age demographic is and all of that as well. But who's responding? Mm -hmm. Are you targeting buyers or sellers primarily with Instagram stories? So we, this is fairly new for us. We've only been doing this about 90 days. And Instagram stories ads aren't that old in, 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 the, in the world of sponsored ads. So right, right. Uh, we've been A-B testing a lot and we've, we're running both. So I can tell you based on the last 60 days of data, the buyer ads that we're running are doing much better than the seller ads. Yeah. Um, we didn't, the, the, our, our seller ads on Facebook do very, very well. Uh, but so far, we haven't quite found the the uh, secret sauce on the Instagram stories ads for sellers. But for buyers, we're getting a, a lot of um, reg registrations from our Instagram stories ads. And what does that ad kind of look like? I know I don't have it. Maybe you can send me a screenshot if you want to for the actual write up. But what does it look? What's the value proposition? What's the offer? It's real basic, and and I, I encourage anybody that is interested in doing this to just. Uh, to, when you want to get started and trying to get ideas for ads, what I did is I just Googled Instagram stories ads and looked at what some of the top, you know, companies out there like Coke, Pepsi are using for their ads yeah. and um, kind of get a gauge of structure from there. It's very simple. I mean, for, for instance, the one we're running right now just says uh, ready to buy a home search now. And it's got a nice picture of a kitchen. And then there's obviously the swipe up option at the bottom, which is allowing you, th that'll take you to how the ad works is a swipe. So they swipe up and it takes you right to the, uh, whatever site you're, you're generating, you're, you're trying to get traffic to. 
So it's the home search site for us. It doesn't need to be wordy. It doesn't need to have tons of content, far less content than um, Facebook ads. But um, it's just very basic. It is very right to the point. It's all so about, right now, it's it's all about the picture, right? And then the call to action. The picture is probably right. a deal. So you want a high res. You know, you can do a video too. But for, you know, for this, I've noticed we tried the video and, and it, it did okay. But the high resolution picture of a kitchen or a really nice home and then you know basic text you know like for instance search now ready to buy a home that's all we've got you know uh you can do a little more a little less you can see what other people are doing and i'll send you a, a picture okay. of what we uh, a screenshot of our current ads so you can see it um, your, can and I then you got to test it on your link where you have search all homes um now, are you sending them to like a an IDX link with a map? Are you did you customize a particular link to track it? Where, where are they going that they're registering? Yeah, so we we're basically going to a very generic a link that's going to get them to sh start searching for properties within the, the audience area that we're targeting. So, for instance, we live in Knoxville. So, say we're looking, you know, the link that they're going to go to will take them immediately to homes that are for sale in Knoxville. We don't want to get too specific because we don't really know yeah. unless uh, what you know, price point they're looking at. But it, it you got to make sure that wherever you're sending them, it's it's giving them immediately what they're looking for. So for home search, they should easily click they swipe up homes to look at and should have the search uh, customization features on your IDX page available so they can start customizing. All right, so they're taken to a page that has a list of homes for sale in Knoxville, but then they also have a little area where they can custom, they can enter their own preferences to get a search matching their price ranges or right. size or whatnot. Is there a map? Be, should be a map. Uh, is there a map? Um, we don't have a map on the, We have a map option, but it's it does not it does not translate as well on mobile as it does on desktop. So it yeah. takes them right to the list of homes. Uh, because obviously Instagram's all mobile, so Good it's point. very mobile friendly. And then, um, you know, they have the map option feature on there, but I just don't like it as much mobile yeah. on mobile as I do on the desktop. Feature. Yeah, it's, uh, all maps to me on on mobile on mobile are not quite as effective. You have to yeah. pinch them and move them around and try to get to the spots. I was just curious how that was working. I've been testing a well, lot with maps lately, and on desktop, exactly, they they're doing much better. Okay, so. Um, so it's very, it sounds, I mean, gosh, I'm going to have to, after we get off this call, I'm going to have to go run one myself and see how, how this works. Mm -hmm. Are you um, noticing, okay, so you said you can target it the same way. Does that mean you can actually select people that are in Knoxville and everything the same way you would with Facebook? Yeah, the campaign setup is almost exactly the same structure and everything, except you're running into stories ad. So the, the, the setup part is almost identical in terms of setting up the audience. Um, so you can, if you understand how to do that on Facebook, this should be a breeze for you. The, where it gets different is actually when you're creating the actual ad. So the size of the photo is a lot different. So you're going to have to keep that in mind when you're creating your, because you're going to have to do some Photoshop ahead of time. If you're going to do a photo, for example, you've got to put your text on that photo. And do a photo sh and Photoshop it on there before you actually upload it. Yeah, because it to it's Facebook. not going to give you the option to add words. No, nah, right. so you've got to do all that ahead of time. So you've got to basically create your ad um, on Photoshop before you can upload it. Canva for the so, for my listeners, John. For my listeners that are, that aren't on Photoshop, don't have Photoshop. Canva is a great free option to create things like this. It's got a free yeah, Canva is perfect. Yeah, you've used yeah, yeah, that's exactly yeah. what you can use. Yeah. So you're just putting a house um, and you're putting search all homes now and that's all that's going on. That do you have your logo on the picture? Well, it does at the top, you know, because okay. at the top it'll show it says Holly Colin McCray groups our Instagram account. So it shows your Instagram account at the top, which has our logo on it. So Okay. Oh, um, by default, you can put your logo on there? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. You can put your logo on there. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. Um, and that's why I said it's always good to just Google Instagram stories ads. Yeah, and that's a great way to get some ideas. Have you yeah. um, have you tested the images or have you just been running one right now? Have you tested the difference between like a kitchen or the outside of a house or the living room or anything like that? Yeah, so I am. We are. I've run all sorts of different ads at this point. And, you know, just like Facebook, you've got to ref you got every few days you got to change them up anyway because they get stale. So yeah. um, we don't run an ad more than, or we 
we don't run it the same ad more than five days. After five days, we're going to change it up with a new photo and a new value proposition. Maybe. Oh. So, okay. you know, because what happens is, is the same people are seeing those ads a lot of times. And yeah. if it's the same thing over and over again, it's effectiveness begins to deteriorate. So you want to change it up. Are you changing the call sure to action or just the, just the image? The call to action is the same. How we present it sometimes is different. You know what I'm saying? Instead of ready to buy a home, searching for a house, you know, you can, okay. all of the, the value proposition is always the same for home search or home or, or sellers, but you were to just change up how we're okay. correct. How about cost? And as far as, go ahead. As far as photos go, just to answer your question. Um, I don't I have not seen a noticeable difference in the type of photos we're using yet. Oh, okay. Are you do are you using stock art? Are you using your own listings? Right. So we're using professional photos from our own listings. Okay. The nice ones. Gotcha. Good stuff. Yeah. Tell me about um, cost per click, cost per lead. Like, are you seeing a difference between your cost for Instagram story ads versus your Facebook ads? Yeah, it's infinitely cheaper. <laughs> it's super cheap for us right now. Yeah. And I think that's because there's not a lot of people doing it. You have far less competition. Sure. Um, Until I now, now that, know, this, I think, now that this interview gets out, we're all in trouble. <laughs> well, I mean, here's the reality. Social media advertising is so ridiculously cheap yeah. uh, for what value it brings um, that it's that it's insane if you're not doing it. it is the, is the, the In terms of ROI and in terms of uh, – effectiveness for lead gen it is the best deal out there by far yeah as so, long as you're careful yes. still with i mean i've seen people put some ridiculous amounts of money in lead ads and things are paying uh, through the roof on lead ads because they don't understand how to set the audience up correctly or or they're choosing the, they're choosing too many demographics in their audience so they're paying too much or they're Landing page is terrible, so their relevant score goes down. So there is a little. And you're right; it is. Right. It's definitely more affordable. But you still got to have a little bit of a handle on what you're doing. Yeah, that's true, and it takes a lot of um, TLC. So that's always good to get somebody like, uh, like, like the Ballin uh, Marketing Group to come in and do that for you if you don't <laughs> want to fool with it, because it does require a lot of attention. Are sure. you doing? You're doing your all yours yourself, right? Yes. And how often do you actually, so let me ask you this. So we'll go back to um, cost, but how many, how many Instagram story ads are you running at a time? One and you change every five days or do you have multiple? Uh, between one and two. We'll okay. run a seller and a buyer. Yeah. And then you're running again, you, you, go ahead. You're running Facebook ads at the same time as well. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. And so are you looking at this every day, once a week? How often do you visit your account? Um, three, three to four times a week, probably. Okay. And on the side, we're, we're, we're doing a lot of things, you know, we're running, you know, we're running boosted, uh, listing video posts, you know, those are really effective. Um, on Facebook or getting Instagram? Registered. On face, both on Facebook and Instagram, you know, we're so, doing some other stuff while we're doing these. So, so tell me about that. It's um, a, it's a, what'd you say? It's a listing video. So it's one of your current listings that you yes. have professional video. So our photographer. We'll do a video of our listings, mm -hmm. the nice ones at least, the ones that garner that would that would that would yeah. benefit from that. And then we're just posting it on Facebook as along with um, along with the uh, on Instagram with the video along with a link back to the actual listing with all the details on our IDX site. And, and we're just boosting it. The video ads are cheap. Yeah, I mean. I mean, just to give you some perspective, we're getting on the last one we 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 ended up for twenty five bucks for four days. We got five thousand views. We got one hundred and twenty eight clicks and um, twelve registrations. Wow! And that was for twenty five bucks. Wow! And that was twelve one registrations video. for twenty five bucks. So a couple bucks a lead. Yeah. Right. That's fantastic. It's fantastic. Yeah. And our sellers are thrilled because they're getting tons of exposure on their, on their listing too. So it's a win-win. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask you on those demographics. So you've got a new listing and it's in Knoxville and it's, I don't even know your guys's price range, $800,000 house, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, it's a nice one. You do the virtual tour on it. You run the video ad that has a link back to more information. And that's where they register to become an ad, uh, become a lead. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when you, 
run that ad, who is your target audience? So this has been, this is where the, the, the grinding comes in. And this is where having guys like you come in and do it for you is important because it's taken a long time to figure out what the, the secret sauce is. And really it's not any more difficult than we, we've really just narrowed it down to a um, radius around the property. How whatever far? the uh, city is. How far of a radius? It depends. On, it depends on the city. Like for instance, if it's in Knoxville, we're going to do forty miles. Oh. If it's in a smaller satellite city, maybe we might do more. It depends on where it is, you know, and, and what's around it. Okay. So say we do forty miles in Knoxville, and uh, people who have, uh, you have three options. You have live in, or recently been to, or currently in. Yeah. So we do people who are currently in, the that area. And that's it. I mean, they're really nothing yeah. more complicated than that. I'm with you, you on you that. You know, because go ahead. Go ahead. It does, I we've tried to narrow it down and refine the range, and it's absolutely killed our conversion. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I, I am. Uh, there's a couple things that I'm seeing with with the target demographics, and I think there's a time for it. I think especially with with certain seller ones, or you're trying to reach like if I want to reach teachers. And I want to promote the, um, you know, the Home for Heroes program or the teachers program. I'm going to target firefighters or I'm going to target um, teachers or things like that here in Nevada. But when you're talking about uh, people that potentially might buy a house, the second you check off that little box that says likely to move, the cost per click mm -hmm. goes through the roof and it completely changes mm -hmm. the demographic based on their lifestyle situations, which may or may not be. be valid. Then you add age, you add income, you yeah. add male, you add female. Every time you add an audience, you're at, you're changing your cost per click for, for mm -hmm. those demographics. So now you get less clicks. You you're not reaching as many people, and it doesn't necessarily add up to a higher conversion rate either, unless it's a really specialty thing. If it's a specialty thing, and you really need to, you know, if if somebody's going to mar market cat products, they 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 really should choose people that that have a cat. That makes complete sense. Right. Yeah, but yes. if somebody's going to buy a house, I think somebody in the area is your is your absolute best candidate. I mean, I do think to myself sometimes like, okay, if this is a million dollar home or even a five hundred thousand dollar home in Vegas, which is you know in the mid range for us, mm -hmm. I I used to select all the income because I only wanted people that could qualify for that price range. But then I realized. I'm actually shooting myself in the foot because what we really want is kind of like if you sit in an open house, you're probably not going to sell that house. Your goal is to pick up the buyers that come in there and sell them a different, you're probably going to sell them a different house because that house isn't going to match something that they want. Well, the same right. thing with these Facebook ads. If you don't give them the ability to click through and start shopping for homes, even if they're in a different price range, you've never gotten the opportunity to actually capture that person's interest that might actually want to buy a house. They just might not be in that price range. Right. And you never know if mom's on Facebook and sees the house and maybe their kid's looking for a house or uncle or relative. And oh my gosh, we, a lot of times you see people tag other people on your yeah. sponsored posts. And that's because they know somebody who might be interested in that property. You, so you really never know. Yeah. Do you do anything with those tags? Do you, do you communicate with the people they tag at all? We, we try to respond to everybody. Sometimes those tags are a little weird because you really don't know yeah. um, what what their their purpose is. But generally, we'll, we'll respond back and say, hey, if you need any more information about this property or ones like it, let us know. And we'll post, we'll, we'll, we'll reply back to it. Um, and, you know, I would say two to three times out of 10, we'll get a response. Did you, how small can you target in the radius for the Instagram story? Do you know? Is it is it like Facebook has a mile? As a mile. Yeah, it's the same. It's, the it's same. all the same. Wow. Interesting. I'm curious because I've got one I ran yesterday on Facebook. I'm, do, I'm testing a new thing. I'm doing real estate market reports because that's been such a hot item for me with ranking on the search engines for that term. So now I'm taking the individual neighborhoods, the smaller neighborhoods, and I'm doing market reports for just that neighborhood. And then I'm running a Facebook ad just within one mile around an address within that neighborhood trying to now it's brand new. I'm just now starting this, but I'm going to have like probably 20 ads running at the same time for different neighborhoods. And I would, I would think if Instagram stories is similar, that might be um, an opportunity as well. 
Yeah, I, I think um, so. There's a lot of the the the, the things you got to think about are this. Um, when you're targeting your neighborhood, think of the age range and the, and the price range of your neighborhood. Because you got to remember, Instagram's a much younger crowd. True. And if you look at the demographics, um, you know, our, our average age of, that are looking at our um, ads is still under 30. Uh, so, so they're buyers. Well, it's generating a lot of. What's they're, that? That's why they're buyers. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't, it's fine. It's great. But you know, are you going to, are you going to do well luxury home listings on Instagram? Probably not. Gotcha. You know, um, you know, or luxury home neighborhoods, but like starter neighborhoods in Vegas probably do well on Instagram. Yeah. But the market report so, probably wouldn't then I would be better off probably running ads that say, see all homes for sale under 200,000. Right. Those would probably yeah. be better for that, for that. Or right. how about this homes around Zappos? You know, like Zappos is this is everybody knows who Zappos is, I think. And everybody, you know, it's mm -hmm. a, there's a, 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 you know, people bicycle around there and you got condos and things like that or homes around UNLV. These would be younger, you know, that type of demographic. And if I'm giving them an option that's nearby where they work or where where they go to school, that's probably more right. likely to capture an Instagram per person. And, and it's not to say that there aren't people who are older were on it. I mean, we do capture pretty well up to 45. Now after 45, it drops off like a, it yeah. drops, falls off a cliff in terms That's of That's why uh, I'm not engagement. on Instagram. I'm over 45. <laughs> well, I'm not a big, uh, per, personally, I don't like it either, but I understand it's relevant. So that's why we it is. use it. But it's um, relevant and it's growing. But, it's going to be increasingly relevant because our, our millennials now are becoming our home buyers, you know? So I get the importance of it and where it's going. I, even though I don't personally enjoy scrolling Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do too. Uh, you know, you talk to a lot of people, a lot of people like it better than Facebook who are younger. Yeah. I think that you listen to the people that are credible in the world. They think that it eventually overtake Snapchat, you know, with its, with the evolution. So mm -hmm. not to say that's going to happen, but I've heard that. So it's, it's important. And, um, again, it's now's the time to get in, get your feet wet and get smart about it. Because you know, this is totally going down another road. But I think over time, as larger companies realize that spending their marketing dollars on social media is better than spending it on TV commercials, which I think will happen in the near future, you're going to start seeing the cost of this stuff going up. So it's already take happened. advantage of this. And get there, the budget, yeah. the, the ad spend for online marketing has already surpassed television. So there are people are right. definitely figuring this stuff out. I think I think search versus social will be the very interesting um, challenge of where people end up spending their money as things change. I personally feel more and more dollars will go to social instead of search because I think I think things are changing quickly. Yeah. And people like you that are early adopters that are getting on here and testing it, you're winning early figuring it out where later it'll be a much more competitive landscape. Well, and it'll be like where pay-per-click is now 10 years ago. If you did pay per click, it was next to nothing in terms yeah. of cost. But um, now uh, it's expensive, and we've we've shifted a lot of money away from pay per click in the last, I would say, six to eight months into social because um, not only is it cheaper, but our conversion rates are starting to improve on social to the point where it's not making less and less sense for us to spend the money on pay per click. Why do you um, think that? It is? just depends. Why do you believe the, that you're converting higher on social versus? Well, the numbers are are telling us that you know we're 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 getting more and more registrations from our ads. We're converting more business. Um, we're getting because more the ads more are cheaper. Don't you think it's probably because your ad spend your your ad spend's lower, your reach is larger, so it's not necessarily the conversion rates higher, but you're getting more conversions because your money's going farther. Does that make sense? Or uh, yeah, but the actual number of people registrations that we're getting every month on Facebook is is growing and growing and growing. Oh, so whereas with pay per click, it's, it's stagnant. That that platform is growing for you specifically. Yeah, so if you look at Facebook and Instagram, um, and we combine them together, you know, uh, and you take our pay per click, and you look at that, and you you get the total number of registrations. Um, over the course of a month, the one the socials could, is is almost is overtaken our our pay per click. Whereas a year ago it was the opposite. Yeah. 
Well, it, so, it, it can be quite simple to run it. Like you said, with your $25 and getting 12 leads, it, it isn't um, super challenging. I think the difference is whether or not those people are really buyers versus somebody on Google who's going to type something in like homes for sale with a pool under 300,000 or under 400,000, that person's actually looking to buy where your social registrations that you just happen to interrupt their feed and they register may not actually be real buyers. The only time will tell with that, right? Because we need more time to test those right. conversions to closing versus conversions to becoming a lead. Eventually it'll become right. a that that cost. Yeah, so you got three tiers of, of of measurement here. You've got well, and and you can dig as deep as you want, but I look at it as you look at first of all, you look at clicks. You know how effective are you getting clicks? Then you look at registrations, and then of those registrations, looking at we I, I go right to um, buyer reps and listing agreements, not necessarily closings. Then I yeah. then I can measure the effectiveness of the ad itself. Yeah. There's there's a lot of variables once they go once they're listed to when they're closed. So obviously you gotta measure an ROI, that's important too. But as far as the effectiveness of that ad, I get all the way drilled down to doing business with, and then I realize how effective the ad is at that yeah. point. Like what quality of leads are we getting? And you're still, and you're seeing good quality with your social ads, obviously if 20% of your closings are coming from there. Yes, so it's it's doing really, really well now. Really the variable this is how well your team converts how well your agents and your isas are converting because yeah. you could have the best ads and you could be generating thousands of leads a month and if your team can't convert then those numbers are going to suck that's right so that's you know again you got to be careful because if you're you, you could have really good ads and you could be doing really really well and be really discouraged because you're not getting any business but it may not be the ads fault it may be your team's ability to convert needs to be improved yeah, and I think everybody who's listening needs to really understand, because because sometimes this stuff can sound so easy, that conversion of web leads, let's just give you a, a, a 1% to 5% general aggregate of all cold leads, of all ad spend, of all organic leads. Let's just say you convert 1% to 5 and it's hard to find 5 as an aggregate total, maybe per, per one source, but total. So let's just say you're going to run all of these ads and you're you're going to convert at a few percent you're going to have to put in time, money, energy, consistency, and see and follow up and systems all the way through to get those two closings out of those 100 leads, right? And that's mm -hmm. where most people actually fail. Don't you agree? Yeah. And, and, and really with these types of leads, if you have a good follow-up system, whether it be automated or through your ISA department and whatnot, and a good touch program, that number goes up dramatically. Yeah, still, still as industry averages, it's ridiculously low, and I think that's that's what people don't realize that there there really has to be, uh, there there just has to be a, a system in place to actually see these all the way through. You wind up spending a bunch of money. You might be able to capture a lot of ads, a lot of leads on one yeah. particular ad, but if you don't have the systems and processes in place, it makes it very challenging to get those to the closing table for 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 the yeah, ad. Yeah, you get discouraged too. You start spending a lot of money and you're not seeing the results and it's just, you know, doing this. So, yeah. um, absolutely, 100%. Let me ask you a question. Out of all of your lead sources, what do you believe is your best, um, is your best source and um, best source of, of closing business? Out of everything you do, is it radio? On the buy side or the list side? Oh, Depends boy. on if you're talking about buyers or sellers. Okay, tell me. Because it's different. Me. Tell me both separately. I know I have to let you go soon, but tell me each. <laughs> okay. Well, for sellers, um, you know, referral business is always the best in terms of in terms of strength, in terms of your conversion rate. That's always going to be the highest. But if you're going to take that out of the equation and strictly from a lead generation standpoint from there, yeah, I, I would say that um, I would say radio and TV, those are those are give us our highest conversion rates in terms of um, contact to appointment. Okay. Uh, and then um, on the buyer side, uh, aside referrals aside, um, our best conversion rate is typically um, sign calls, people who are calling for more information, people are, who are contacting us through a website that are getting our number to try to get more information on a property, the phone calls that come in.
typically so, have the highest conversion rate. So, ha so still for you, it's having that inventory, having those listings and generating the interest for those specific listings are still your, which makes perfect sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Regardless yeah. of Huge. how you are. I mean, it's, it's a must. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the phone ringing, I mean, our, our, our the phone is, is gold in our office on the buy side. That phone generates a lot of business for, for our agents and it still rings. Um, and people still call and, and <laughs> those people who actually pick up the phone, dial the number and want to speak to us are generally at least moderately interested in buying a house. Yeah. I always say, I've, I've said that forever and ever and ever. Somebody actually takes the time in this day and age to pick up the phone and call. That is generally your strongest potential appointment waiting to happen. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. We call it the money line. If the phone rings, it's you know, as long other than a sales, other than a junk sales spammy call, if if it's if it's a buyer or seller, that that's your best chance right there. All right, John. Well, right. you've been fantastic, and this was this was uh, really good. Now I now I've got a good a much better understanding of it. I'm actually going to go test one, test one or two myself and get those running so that we can share that more with everybody. And um, you're just always I I, I would love. You have so much to give us and I've had you on twice already. So because there's so much I love that you and Holly are doing out there. So you guys remember Holly McRae uh, team for your referrals to Knoxville, Tennessee, and, um, and, and they'll take very good care of your clients. Right, John. All right. Thanks, Lori. I appreciate right. the time. This was fun. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.